Kevin, are you still capable of producing quality content? I don't know how anymore. So I watched Monarch, Legacy of Monsters, the spin-off TV series following the events of 2014's Godzilla. And it's really good. Not perfect, but really good. Which is far more than I could ever say about almost any of the MCU's attempts at creating TV series. Oh! So what makes this television expansion of a major blockbuster franchise work so well, while the MCU has failed so miserably to translate to TV? You're gonna find out when we come back. <laughs> that? It was a Godzilla intro. That little <laughs> After over a decade of dominating the media landscape on both the big and small screens, it's finally starting to look like the shared cinematic universes are on their way out. Marvel Studios forever changed the game with 2012's The Avengers, creating a blueprint for interconnected movie franchises that could seemingly break a billion dollars at the box office with relative ease. Many Hollywood studios attempted to follow suit throughout the 2010s, yet pretty much all have failed. Universal tried to launch a dark universe. Sony has had multiple passes now at their own Spider-Man universe, even including a jab at the f Perhaps the most famous example of a bundled cinematic universe would be the DCEU, which continued to chug along in a confusing and disjointed fashion after releasing this pile of in 2017. So it's all the more miraculous that the MonsterVerse, which has pit Godzilla against King Kong and other favorite giant monsters on the big screen, is still standing tall amongst the rubble of its fellow wannabe multimedia franchises. And it's still not slowing down. If anything, it's only ramping up. Maybe it's an advantage that the MonsterVerse often falls into a purposefully dumb kind of entertainment category. Or maybe it's the way it's shown impressive restraint with the quantity of its content over the past decade, unlike... <clears throat> Beginning in 2014 with Gareth Edwards' modern take on everyone's favorite giant lizard, unless like this is your favorite or something, I don't The MonsterVerse saw even more success with their prequel follow-up Kong Skull Island, which is odd because it's a pile of in fact, I found everything in this universe released after 2014's Godzilla to be a major step down in quality, and I have an upcoming video on what modern blockbusters can learn from Gareth Edwards' Godzilla, so subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for that. But after stumbling a bit at the box office with Godzilla King of the Monsters, the franchise made a significant COVID comeback with the long-awaited Godzilla vs. Kong, which has helped ensure the universe's continuation. And while the MonsterVerse is on an upward trend, the MCU and its not-so-cinematic TV universe is most definitely not. Aside from a couple obvious outliers, actually just one, the MCU Disney Plus shows are in a tailspin and in danger of breaking Marvel entirely. Following the well-publicized flop that was Secret Invasion, Marvel finds itself at a crossroads with some serious creative decisions to make. With Netflix dominating the streaming world, Disney had to start strong with its own streaming platform. Luckily, it had recently acquired two of the hottest properties in cinema, Marvel and Star Wars. Which is crazy, because look where they are now. This was in addition to its own iconic collection of animated offerings. Unsurprisingly then, the order was issued for each of its new acquisitions to start churning out content for the platform immediately. This was uncharted territory for the MCU, which immediately started treating TV shows like extra long movies, and it hasn't stopped since. This, to be fair, led to a pretty strong start for the studio, as it produced the best MCU TV show so far. Finale aside, I think WandaVision's probably the best piece of content Marvel has released since Endgame. Which isn't saying a whole lot, I guess. It took numerous narrative risks as it delved into one of the MCU's dangerous characters while setting up some hefty stakes for the future of the MCU. For that reason, it also stands as one of the only MCU Disney Plus shows that was significantly tied to the big screen universe itself. The show was somewhat necessary viewing for anyone who wanted to watch the horrendous Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness with a clear view on why Wanda had suddenly become villainous. This, however, was not a trend that would persist through the MCU streaming shows. While shows like WandaVision and Loki, two of the most viewed MCU Disney Plus shows, urge viewership partly due to their connections to the wider MCU, the need to view other shows has diminished with successive installments. She-Hulk, for instance, does not necessitate viewing for any of the next big MCU installments. Or for anything, really, if you have any respect for your Of course, making every MCU show required viewing is far too tall an order for Marvel to be demanding of its audience. Running shows that introduce characters while also slotting in piecemeal plot points that connect to the larger picture is a healthy way of running both shows and movies that share the same universe. However, it means that the shows will take a hit on viewership. Compile that with the fact that the shows are all complete shit, and you end up tanking the most successful film franchise of all time. Running a synchronous universe with TV and film running concurrently is a tough task, and clearly the MCU's approach to adding television to their universe has failed miserably. Which is why I was so curious to see how Legendary was going to attack its MonsterVerse TV expansion. Developed by Chris Black and Matt Fraction, 
Monarch Legacy of Monsters marks the first live-action television series for the expanding franchise, following Netflix's animated Skull Island show, which I don't think anyone saw. It's an impressive feat when a massive franchise like this is able to really stick with its established lore and world-building across different stories, characters, filmmakers, and mediums. And Monarch is a genuine treat in that regard for those who have become true fans of the MonsterVerse over the years. Monarch Legacy of Monsters takes place between the events of Godzilla and King of the Monsters, in a world that's still struggling to come to terms with the shocking revelation that, well, this happened. <laughs> it's fun to explore the ways different parts of the globe have reacted differently to Godzilla's 2014 battle in San Francisco. From your very common case of PTSD from survivors, to conspiracy theorists running rampant in the aftermath, to new defense technologies and underground bunkers being established in numerous countries. All the way to the characters and desperate search of the best VPN service to purchase this Black Friday which is clearly Atlas VPN. Surf the internet privately and safely using Atlas VPN. Don't be this guy, falling for malicious links, targeting your sensitive information in this digital age we live in. With Atlas VPN, you always keep your Google searches in private. You can browse the web with real and organic search results and do it without any unwanted tracking of your activity. My favorite part about Atlas VPN is that I'm not region restricted when it comes to binging my streaming content. Watching a fantastic film like Nightcrawler on Netflix is something that is impossible for me living in Canada. But with Atlas VPN, I can simply change the location of my network, boot up Netflix again from a different region, and boom, I have a vast amount of new content at my fingertips that I wouldn't have had before. Enjoy Black Friday price cut because now Atlas VPN Premium is just $1.70 per month with six months extra and a 30 day money back guarantee. Protect your privacy and get many benefits of Atlas VPN for the ridiculously low price. You can take this deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Be quick as it's a limited time offer. Protection from ads and malware, as well as the ability to save some coins while shopping online. Atlas VPN works on all of your devices with a single subscription to block all the malicious links, ads, and trackers, and even notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Never settle for missing out on your favorite content again. Take advantage of the Black Friday price cut and the ridiculously low price of $1.70 per month. This discount won't last forever, so get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. The thing that was exciting was to tell a human scaled story on a monster scaled stage. The human reaction demonstrated in the show actually provides a fairly realistic view and approach of how society tends to respond to major global events. This more ground level approach to the world of monsters and its characters is a nice change of pace from the movie's usual focus on enormous spectacle, which actually allows us to connect to Gareth Edwards' slower burn take from 2014 much more naturally. The plot of the show follows two siblings, Kate and Kentaro, who are brought together for the first time following the mysterious disappearance of their father. The two discover their family's connection to the secretive organization known as Monarch, who study and monitor titans like Godzilla, and embark on a globetrotting adventure to uncover the truth about their father, Monarch itself, and maybe even this guy. Many complaints have been lobbed at the MonsterVerse franchise for the supposed failures of its human drama, and Monarch Legacy of Monsters does its best to rectify that. The backstories and relationships between all of the human characters are the real driving force of the series, and thanks to solid writing and performances, they're the most engaging aspect of it. That's not to say that there's no monster action to enjoy though. However, those wanting this TV show to be another epic King of the Monsters style showdown will have to look elsewhere. But this is the exact reason why I was interested in the show in the first place. Despite being smaller in scale, Monarch Legacy of Monsters still tries to capture the film's grand scale and world changing discovery, and for the most part, it succeeds. Like other Apple TV Plus original series, the money and high scale production quality are clearly felt on screen. The monsters and locations look great, and the effects are far more impressive than your average television or streaming endeavor. Which on the topic of Apple TV shows, you also check out Severance if you haven't seen it yet. And then check out my theory videos on Severance. Although they're some of the first videos I made on YouTube, so maybe don't actually. Monarch is not without its cheesy, overly dramatized dialogue, and way too many instances of no way they survived that. These elements occasionally threaten to bring Monarch Legacy of Monsters down, though it always manages to right itself before falling too far off the tracks. Director Matt Shackman, which funny enough directed WandaVision, helms the first pair of episodes and delivers the exact kind of character-driven drama that should surround an extraordinary story like that of Godzilla. But he also manages to establish the show's intriguing central mysteries. Marvel Studios may have shown everyone how to properly handle a movie universe, but it has since floundered with its uneven expansion to television. 
Although Echo and the completely unnecessary Agatha show are both slated for release in 2024 and unlikely to undergo any major changes within that time, it looks as though Marvel is overhauling its process for developing TV shows starting with Daredevil Born Again. The idea of a 6 hour movie is being scrapped in favour of a more traditional TV format. This means more episodes, less reliance on post production fixes, and actual showrunners, to name a few things. The days of producing a movie across six episodes and then making changes are seemingly over for Marvel and their new spotlight banner for telling standalone stories, which is something I have been saying Marvel must do for quite some time, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. The fact that the upcoming Daredevil show is set to comprise 18 episodes is evidence of this change from Marvel. It is also slated to be a less gung-ho depiction of the lawyer turned superhero as Marvel experiments with a more grounded approach to telling the stories of its character via the small screen medium. This is something that, coincidentally, will begin with Echo, a more street level depiction of one of Marvel's most interesting heroes. To see Marvel react productively to the outcomes of its most recent flops is a positive outcome and it can certainly learn from the success of another major blockbuster telling a more street level character driven story for TV with Monarch Legacy of Monsters. As long as the studio does justice to some small screen characters for the future, this could usher a welcomed new era of MCU streaming. But it is Disney, so probably not. I don't know how anymore. I don't know how.